This week, we saw all that there was to see at CES, and we've got some truly exciting details about SteamOS and some weird drama. We'll talk about it. Plus, NVIDIA announces major support for the Steam Deck going forward, and a new Bazite update makes me look like an idiot. All of this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck and Linux gaming news time. So at CES this week, NVIDIA announced that they're going to release a native GeForce Now client for the Steam Deck. And I think this is a huge deal. The details here are fascinating too. Now throughout this entire press release, NVIDIA says Steam Deck rather than Linux desktops. And I find that rather interesting, especially given the fact that we have uh, SteamOS support coming to other devices very soon. I would imagine it would be very difficult for them to add uh, a check in the software that prevents it from running on Linux desktops other than uh, Steam Decks. But I don't know, I'd love to know what you think about this because they never said that they were bringing it to Linux, they just said to Steam Deck. Now, NVIDIA has supported GeForce Now on the deck uh, currently through a web app, and they've actually gone out of their way and called out how you can install this web app on your Steam Deck and other Linux machines. But that's limited in the video codecs that it uses uh, and also in the resolutions that it can support. I actually covered how to install the GeForce Now web app and I reviewed the service last year. You can check that out up here. What's going to make a huge difference though is that a native client for the Steam Deck means that NVIDIA will be able to support up to 4K resolutions at 60 frames a second with high dynamic range or HDR support. There's even talk of 120 FPS at 1440p resolutions. Now obviously these high resolutions and refresh rates require a display that will support such output modes but I think this is a big deal nonetheless. GeForce Now, while not necessarily my kind of thing, is a great option for anyone who wants to play unsupported games on their Steam Deck. Titles that have anti-cheat that don't support Linux, for example, would be great to play on this service. It's got unbelievably low latency, and I had a really good experience when I got to demo the product last year. Plus, if you've got an OLED deck, then you can play these games in HDR in handheld mode. Now, I want to know if you have actually tried the, the web app for GeForce Now. Uh, have you done the whole install process that they laid out last year? Let me know down in the comments. What's been your experience and are you excited for this native application? And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube you want to see more videos just like this. And did you know that I release a new video every Monday and Friday morning? Get subscribed so you don't miss those. I want to thank all the amazing folks over on Patreon who make the work that I do here possible. If you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can help support this show with a monthly contribution uh, with the link down below. You can also become a YouTube member as well. All right, let's get back to the news. So if you've got a wireless Hori pad for Steam and a Steam Deck OLED, then listen up because there's a new firmware update for the controller and it should fix a minor annoyance that a bunch of folks have been reporting. Quote, the Steam Deck OLED has a feature that allows the connected controller to wake up the console from sleep. When the Steam Deck OLED goes to sleep while our wireless Hori pad is connected, due to product specifications, there is a bug that the wireless Hori pad automatically wakes up the Steam Deck and this bug occurs only when using Steam Deck OLED. The firmware will fix this issue and the sleep feature can be enabled again. So if you've got a Hori pad, you can head over to uh, the website that's linked below. You can download the firmware update. Then you can turn the controller off and then plug the controller in while holding down the, uh, the view and start buttons and then run the application. Although this download looks like it's only for Windows. So your mileage may vary here. All right, now it's time for Deals of the Week, where we review some of the best bundles and sales to help you grow your library. There's an excellent deal on Humble right now. It's the uh, Speed Running with Awesome Games Done Quick, or AGDQ. And this bundle has seven games for 12 bucks. It's pretty neat. So first off, we have Have a Nice Death, which is verified. We have Ori and the Blind Forest, which is verified. We have Sonic Lost Worlds, also verified. Shenmue 1 and 2, which is unsupported, but on ProtonDB, it's listed as gold support. Uh, Bullets Per Minute, which is playable. Then we have New Super Lucky's Tale, which is verified. And Condemned Criminal Origins, which is playable, and ProtonDB Platinum. For 12 bucks and what you get, I think it's a pretty stellar uh, bundle, honestly. As always, you can use my links below to help support this show at no additional cost to you. And thanks. So handheld manufacturer GPD has been in some hot water recently. Uh, it's, this is some incredibly funny and incredibly stupid drama. 
and uh, I wanted to talk about it because it makes me chuckle a little bit. So what happened was GPD updated the store page for their upcoming Win4 handheld. And what jumped out to a lot of people, the most interesting change here, was that they noted SteamOS support was coming, specifically calling out help from Valve. Quote, so far the Win4 is the smallest AMD APU handheld in the world, but its predecessor is powerful, far surpassing the custom APU of the Steam Deck. The Win4 inherits the sliding design and physical buttons of the Win3, and it supports Windows 10 and 11 and SteamOS with some adaptation provided by Valve. This news was crazy as we were anticipating Lenovo announcing the first uh, third party support for SteamOS with their Legion Go S device. And none of those announcements had taken place at this point, so it seemed like GPD was trying to snipe that. Uh, that crown from Lenovo. But then Sean Hollister from The Verge spoke with Valve's Lawrence Yang, who said, and I quote, we are not currently working with GPD on official SteamOS support. Pretty plain as day, right? Now, when Liam from Gaming on Linux reached out to GPD for comment, they didn't actually answer the question he asked about why they had lied. Quote, I'd like to tell you that Steam sent us an email after launching Steam Deck, hoping that our devices could be pre-installed with SteamOS. We did not agree to pre-install SteamOS, but agreed to provide users with a SteamOS image that matched our devices for download on our official website. However, they did not provide us with a technical image or technical support, including power management tools for our device and solutions to bugs encountered by users. So what does that have to do with anything, GPD? Come on, what is going on here? The fact of the matter is this looks like a cool device that I'd like to get my hands on and test out, especially if it came with something like SteamOS pre-installed or there was really good support for it out of the box. I mean, it basically looks like a PlayStation Vita, but with a slide out keyboard, which is nifty. I would really love to have a form factor like this uh, to play games with. I don't know. I think that this was very interesting uh, drama. I'm not sure why they decided to say they had official SteamOS support when they didn't. Um, but GPD, if you're watching, can you give me an answer? You can send me an email, gardener at heavyelement.io. I'd love to hear from you guys. But here's the deal. This wasn't the only rumor that Valve quashed this week. No, no, no. We got to talk about the video cards leak. Hardware review site Video Cards with a Z were able to get their hands on some slides from AMD's hardware announcements. Uh, one of the most interesting slides included this. The title of the slide, AMD Ryzen Z2 series processors. And it says, quote, AMD continues to meet the explosive growth and demand of the handheld gaming segment. Now, if you squint really hard and you focus your attention right down in the bottom right corner, you might be able to make out uh, what looks to be something like a Steam Deck, maybe? Sarcasm? Here, it's labeled as the Steam Deck, all one word. Uh, on a slide about future AMD APUs and the explosive demand for handhelds. Now, this slide caught a lot of attention from the internet at large because it seemed to be that AMD was like soft announcing a new Steam Deck using a Z2 series processor. But quickly after this news broke, Valve's Pierre Liu took to Blue Sky to forcefully quash any speculation of what the slide could mean. Quote, there is and will be no Z2 Steam Deck. Guessing the slide was meant to say the series is meant for products like that, not announcing anything specific. Now this clarification was met with some disappointment from Steam Deck fans, but honestly, I think that it's the right move from Valve. For all the bluster from the, oh, uh, oh, uh, bigger number, better crowd, the Z2 isn't that much better than what's available in the Steam Deck. And it would be objectively the wrong move for Valve to release a new handheld at this point powered by the Z2. Now, I'm not saying it's not powerful. It is. I'm not saying it's not more powerful. It is. I'm just saying that it is not powerful enough. And Valve respects their customers enough to not release annual hardware updates with incremental changes. Despite what some folks might say, I think the Steam Deck's hardware still has a ton of life left in it. And it's up to Valve and game developers to optimize this hardware and make the most out of it. Now on Monday, I made a video responding to Linus Tech Tips. In that video, uh, I said that there was no support for NVIDIA GPUs in GameScope, Valve's in-house compositor for game mode on SteamOS. But isn't it just like Linux though for Bazite to prove me wrong that same day? 
Bazite, if you're not familiar, is one of the best Linux gaming distros out there, and they released an experimental image for NVIDIA GPUs that very same day. Now, it's important to note that this is a beta with known bugs, and most of the bugs in this release are because of the drivers and therefore cannot be directly addressed by Bazite themselves. However, if you've got an RTX 2000 series card or greater, it should be supported, at least partially, in game mode on Bazite. Now, this is super neat to see, as Gamescope is one of the unsung heroes of Linux gaming. It's not only used by SteamOS, but it's also used by other Linux gaming distros, including Bazite and Chimera. It's an open source project made by Valve that handles scaling for Windows, sizing and orientation. It also prevents exclusive full screen games from mode switching your monitor or TV. It handles the Steam menu and the quick access menu overlays. It also enables many of the performance menu features that we've come to rely on as deck gamers. And it's just a neat technology that enables a console like experience for PC games, which is pretty awesome. Now, if you have now, if you have a 2000 series card or later for Nvidia, are you going to try out Bazite on your desktop? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Well, that's going to do it for this video, but I want to thank my uh, patrons and my YouTube members for making this show a reality. If you'd like to see your name listed over here, you can use the links below to make a monthly contribution. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on Monday.